Hey traders, checking into the stock market today, a wild one out there with a bearish reaction to the CPI numbers and a big drop pre-market. And then once we had the gap down open, bulls buying hand over fist, big bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing candle and big volume behind it as well. So notable buying of the dip and I was on the wrong side today, but I was still green. But trading counter trend, I was very active. I had to do a ton of flipping and I obviously made less than I would have if I were bullish. So I can look at this and say, darn, I should have bought the gap down open. And that may be the case, but I also reflect upon the fact that I was in a mindset where we either reached extremes and we got close to those extremes, but not quite. We either reach, reach extremes for historical bounces on RSI levels on multiple time frames, or bulls show me something and that has me shift from my bearish bias. And that bearish bias has helped me make money over the last couple of weeks. And so I look at a day like today and I've traded these bounces very well this year, the meaningful bounces that we have had. And this is one that I just did not. So I am a-okay with that personally. And an example of the flipping that I had to do, this is about a third of the orders that I had today, but just going for that climax top and then we pulled back 1% over maybe a 30 minute time frame, And so I was very actively scalping and was able to get a win after stopping out. You know, I was trying to short too early. I was looking for a 15 minute lower high initially, but it was forgiving in the sense that this little pullback on the five minute time frame allowed me to exit half my position and then get stopped out break even. And because I had a couple losses that were break even, it allowed for me to still be looking bearish for the hourly consolidation up here. The hourly consolidation never came. So again, I was wrong all day, but still able to make profit. So for me, it's a win. But what today does is it does shift my perspective. As I mentioned, there's two criteria that are going to have me looking bullish. It's going to be bulls proving something or it's going to be RSI at extremes. And today, this is bulls proving something to me because they have the volume behind this move. You look at this move and we got the volume of 143 million, which is 45%, 43% more than the 20 day average volume. And it is the highest volume day that we've seen since, what was Friday? Why were we high volume then? I forget, but something happened that Friday to give us high volume, but it's the second highest volume day we've seen in six plus weeks, a couple months. So it's very notable. We do still need the hourly trend change. We have not seen SPY and QQQ during regular trading hours confirm an hourly higher low and higher high. It's been seven days or so, seven trading days. So over a week and a half since it has happened. So we need to start changing trends one at a time. Tomorrow, we have to set an hourly higher low and higher high. Patient bulls that were waiting all day for hourly consolidation that we never got, they're waiting for it tomorrow as well. And they're gonna look for entries on those hourly oversold conditions. What are some clues that are gonna tell us that bulls are for real? Trend change follow through. Dollar losing weekly EMA 12. We'll look at that in just a moment. Five minute back burners. If we see SPY and QQQ hit five minute oversold the next time it happens and it marks an hourly higher low into continuation, that's gonna show me aggressive dip buying and that will be another tally in the bull column. So today was essentially for me, all right, I'm paying attention to you bulls. You got my attention, but I still need a lot of follow through because we're still in a daily downtrend. And SPY from the low of the day to the high of the day had an absolutely massive move, 5% plus. But from where we closed, we need another 3.5% to break the daily lower high. If you want to look at a historical example, the closest thing that we have nearby is Feb February 24th when U was invaded by R. And I'm not going to say the words because YouTube likes to make us a political channel, which we are not, but that was here. Gap down open, massive volume, and just a short-term fear climax. The RSI levels were very similar as well. One little difference is the hourly RSI back here was a lot more beat up, but we ended up with the bounce. We got multiple days of follow through. We gave most of it back, and then we saw another leg up, and that was not the bottom. So I'm confident that this is a temporary bottom, but I'm certainly not saying anything about the bottom until we start to follow through significantly. So at this point, it's a weekly bear flag confirming with no follow through and bulls are attempting this reversal. If you change the hourly trend, another check mark for the bulls. And then we focus on 379.46 resistance on the daily 
knowing that whenever this move tops out, we must hold the low and then break the high to see that continuation. And even from then, <clears throat> we just zoom out and watch weekly EMA 12 resistance. And we'll need more follow through from there. But it's a start. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's a notable start for the bulls and they need follow through from here. So what does this mean? This means I am now much less aggressive as a bear and I'm much more open to being a bull with my day trades. And this is now a level that bulls can use a stop loss against. The one most glaring clue pre-market, or not pre-market, right after the bell rang, was VIX weakness. <clears throat> this was the kind of scenario where I was looking for, uh-oh, the VIX might confirm this weekly bull flag because all of our major sectors are breaking our fear lows. And we failed to break that level. And very shortly, we were in the red on the VIX. So you can see here, you know, the VIX was going up for the first 15 minutes of the day, but from 9.45 to 10 a.m., hitting the new low was very notable. And 9.45 to 10 was, you know, the start of a bounce here, but in my opinion, the weakness in the VIX was a lot more notable than the oversold bounce we were seeing in the market at that point. Bummer that the day ended right here because we had a nice... QQQ was a little bit better, but a nice little guide here on the five minute little channel to be watching. And if that were to break bear, we would be looking for hourly consolidation. But I am mostly flat at this point. And if we open higher tomorrow, I'm looking bearish for hourly consolidation. If we open lower tomorrow, I'm scouting hourly higher lows as bulls. So essentially in, in a two week mindset, maybe a little bit less than that, but I've only been looking bearish every day, pretty much every day. And that's now shifted. Now I'm open to both directions after today's volume. So that's how I'm approaching the market. QQQ is very similar. It was weaker. It was bouncing notably. But we need the hourly trend change to confirm. And then we need a daily trend change to confirm. Anything under 284.18 is just a daily lower high in a continued downtrend. So one day is great, but follow through is needed. The dollar daily lower high is set again. We had a quick one here that didn't last long, but it's a daily uptrend as long as 110.05 support is holding. And pretty much if we lose 110.05, we'll be losing weekly EMA 12 at that point as well. So it's a very key level for me, but there's also the possibility that we just form a tightening daily range into a good part of next week. And at this point, we're now focused on earnings, financial sector earnings tomorrow and into the start of next week. And then we've got tech sector earnings to end the month. So that's going to be key from here. But essentially, everybody was just on one side of the boat. And the, the other reason that it's very similar to that February 24th move is we were weak and weak and weak and everybody's looking for the invasion and it's coming in 12 hours and 20, it's coming. And then it finally came and the market rallies. And so bearish CPI numbers, why are we bouncing? Because we've been weak, we've been weak, we've been weak. We've been weak. If it's bearish CPI numbers, oh, that's the end of the world. And we were just at a point where everybody was on one side of the boat. After the drop on the morning, at this point in time, there is nobody left to short that has not already entered a short position either days ago or on the reaction itself. And there is nobody left to sell their longs that has not sold in the previous couple of days or on the reaction itself. And so all you have is bulls buying the dip and shorts covering. And so it's a lot of buying at the ask because the, the, everybody was on one side of the boat and the boat flipped. And so you only had one direction. And I, again, I, I failed to recognize that it would be this significant. And I'm going to do some self-reflecting on that, but track record for the year has been pretty good. So I think I'm going to give myself a, a green pass on this one. It would have been something else, you know, if I was shorting all day and not being not managing my stops and, you know, had a, a three-day loser, then I would definitely be a lot harder on myself. Semiconductor is bullish engulfing. Same thing, though. We need the hourly trend change tomorrow, and then we zoom out, and anything under 204.71 is a lower high. We can bounce 10% from here and be in a daily downtrend still. So again, one day is not enough. It's a good start, but stay critical of bulls. Make them prove it to you. Make them prove that you should have positions for the bulls. Don't make excuses for them. They've got to prove it. 
Tesla bounced right off our support, double bottom now at 206. So gap down right on support. And the hourly trend change is needed here as well. And then we zoom out with tons of space for a daily lower high. I'm extremely confident that Tesla is going to form a daily lower high as the result of this bounce. It's where that is the tricky part. So we watch the hourly uptrend as our guide. We watch the daily EMA 12 resistance as our guide. First things first, can we change the hourly trend to the bulls tomorrow? Healthcare, gap down under the recent low. Obviously, V-shaped recovery. Gap filled at 124.94, and now it's all about 127.55. If we don't break that level, bulls aren't going anywhere. If we break that level, it's meaningful to try and shape up a monthly higher low here. So nice reaction. Did we change the hourly trend bullish? No. Just straight up all day. So we got to do that. Financial sector, the just monster move. From the low of the day to the high of the day, six, almost 7% for an entire major sector that is massive. 32.37, key level, and we have to change the hourly trend to the bulls. Earnings will be a factor, but certainly the most bullish day we've seen in a couple months, if not a lot longer than that. IWM, pretty much a double bottom at the fear low. Bulls need to get over 176.17 to confirm a hold of support and break of resistance. And the hourly trend change is needed here as well. So I do expect a lot of bulls are going to be buying hourly higher lows tomorrow after missing this move. We got to watch what the retracement size is. Ideal scenario for bulls would be a bull flag into continuation. Biotech sector held support as well. Bulls need to get over 83.51. The VIX, as I mentioned, notable weakness on the morning. Good eye for those that were pointing it out in the chat room. Anything above 28.50 is a higher low. Very similar to the dollar. Very similar. I mean, you can't tell the two apart if you're just flipping real quick back and forth. So anything above 28.50 is a daily higher low. Cannabis names got their bounce, but not very meaningful just yet. CGC is building a base, 233 and 232 is a triple bottom in the last few days. U.S. cannabis names, MSOS, trying for the daily higher low. So again, we had the news surge, never changed the hourly trend, gave it all back. Now trying for the higher low, and then we'll look for a daily lower high to be the result of this bounce. Have to break the high of today, tomorrow, to confirm an hourly uptrend. Silver, still for our EMA 12 resistance. So much less significant buying of the dip here. It's a, a lower wick, absolutely. Bulls bought the dip, but not nearly as strong as the broader stock market. If for our EMA 12 is still resistance, the bears still have short-term control here. And gold is a bit stronger on the dip buying, but same thing, we're not really progressing at the moment. Follow through is needed. Miners, GDXJ, a lot of weakness first thing this morning, but notable bounce, trying for the higher low compared to 25.80. And this is an inverse head and shoulders attempt. Got to make it all the way back up over 32.35, another 10% plus to the upside, if it's going to confirm. Oil bulls bought the dip. Trend changes are needed here as well. We don't have them yet. Trying for the daily higher low. And natural gas defending 622, but still have to break 710 if we're going to see a resistance break. So all in all, a lot of, lot of buying of the dip, a lot of volume. Trend changes on the hourly are needed tomorrow. Daily trend changes are needed next week. Bulls still have proving to do. It's a good start. It's enough to turn some heads and shift some perspective. But I've seen too many bull moves fast and hard get faded big time this year so stay critical. That's, that's the takeaway. Stay critical of the bulls. Make them consistently continue to prove it. Don't be making excuses. Well, we bounced really hard, so it's okay that we pull back over 50% of that move. Five-minute first oversold conditions will be very telling as to how aggressively bulls buy that dip. Hope you had a good day out there. Congrats to the bulls that nailed the bounce. It was a good one. Took a lot of courage. 
and bears a scout in daily lower highs and hourly consolidation, depending on how we open tomorrow. I hope you're well, do good things. Leaves are popping off, we're just about peak, I'd say. I always love the maple trees the most, these Japanese maples. Very vivid red and oranges. This is my I forgot to film stuff. Let's do it from the porch before we do the video. Color. Look at that decoration. Natural decoration. Just let it go. Worry about it when it's dead.